This episode contains adult themes and is not appropriate for all audiences. Listener discretion is advised. They Will Kill, a true crime podcast. I'm Sadie Eck. And I'm Courtney Eck. And it's Courtney's night. Yeah. Please excuse my sister's voice. She, <laughs> I, oh, she sounds, it's embarrassing. <laughs> Just kidding. I, it kind of sounds cool, actually. Yeah. Sadie's got, it's getting over like a flu. It was really fun. So if you hear wheezing and struggling and coughing, it's not... Uh, some sort of attack (laughs) (laughs) just an attack on my immune system i actually feel so much better good lord there's not a 85 year old man being assaulted in the room with either of us i can laugh without coughing which is a vast improvement very good very good so anyway yeah tonight is kind of a this is a doozy this is a crazy one this is the tragic case of catfisher thomas montgomery Hmm. and we're not talking Catfishing. Like southern style food. <laughs> like, what do they call it when you put your arm in the hole? Gigging. 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 We're, not, we're not gigging. We're not catfishing for catfish. We're catfishing for innocent, innocent people. People. Yep. Yeah. Um, and before I start, I want to give credit to an article called An I Am Infatuation Turned to Romance. Then the truth came out. That was written by Nadia Lobby for Wired Magazine because I relied heavily on it for the story. I also want to acknowledge that I found this story through the 2012 film Tall Hot Blonde, directed by America's sweetheart, Courtney Cox. Oh. I wouldn't say that it's a good film, <laughs> I love but this story, is, this story is wild AF, and so here we go. Yes. Yep, and... Big ups to Courtney Cox for her directorial debut. <laughs> it just plays, it's actually a pretty entertaining movie, but it's very, um, like, after school specially. Oh, I can imagine. You know, with the music yeah. and stuff. Anyway. So Thomas Montgomery was a married father of two daughters who lived in Clarence, New York, and worked in a factory that made components for power tools. He led an excruciatingly normal life, spending time bringing his daughters to swim practice, walking their dog Shadow, and hanging out with his guy friends at their occasional poker nights. Thomas eventually joined his friends online to play Texas Hold'em on a site called Pogo.com, and this is where his life would begin to take a wild and tragic turn. Thomas found himself in the middle of a bit of a midlife crisis, quote, a 45-year-old former Marine with a reddish mustache, bulging gut, and disappearing hair, and decided to take advantage of the anonymous nature of online friendships and became a new version of himself. Quote, that person he wrote on his work stationery that he stored in his toolbox at work would be an 18-year-old Marine named Tommy. He would be a black belt in karate with bullet scars on his left shoulder and right leg, thick red hair, and impressive dimensions, Six foot two, 190 pounds, and a nine inch dick. <laughs> what year are we again? This is 2005, I believe. Okay, so still yes. early ish. Yeah, yeah, yes. Still kind of dial up era. He also decided that Tommy would be a millionaire somehow. Oh, <laughs> I don't, I don't wow, know the backstory. Old yes, Marine. millionaire Marine. Yeah. This new version of Thomas logged on to Pogo.com under the name Marine Sniper in the spring of 2005 and had the confidence to chat with a 17-year-old girl from West Virginia named Jessica, who played under the moniker Tall Hot Blonde 50. The two immediately began long chats where Tommy would tell Jesse all about his life, quote, His mom had died of cancer when he was 12, he told her, and his father was a military man. At 17, Tommy had raped a cheerleader, and his life became so hopeless that he enlisted in the Marines. Oh, God. After a stint at boot camp in June to train as a sniper, he was headed to Iraq. Like, what the fuck kind of backstory is that, dude? Seriously. Seriously. 
He also sometimes pretended to be Tommy's dad, Tom Sr., and claimed he could only chat at odd hours because the military limited his internet access. He also had Jesse send any care packages to his father's house because he, quote, had contacts in Iraq and could get them to the young Marine quickly. Jesse fell for Tommy's lies, was impressed by his honesty and eagerness to turn his life around, and at one point Tommy said he'd planned to kill himself in Iraq, but she made him promise to stay alive for her. The two talked on the phone occasionally, exchanged photos, which proved that Jesse's screen name was appropriate, as she was indeed a tall, hot blonde, and sometimes Jesse would chat with Tom Sr. if she couldn't get a hold of Junior. The two fell deeply in love, and quote, Tommy told Jesse that he had their special motto, the Marine saying, always and forever, tattooed on his arm, along with her name encircled by a heart. Jesse, for her part, crafted video montages of herself for Tommy that were set to power ballads like Aerosmith's I Don't Want to Miss a Thing uh, and Lone Star's uh, I'm Already There. <laughs> poor, poor, poor thing. Fucking teenage romance, my God. God. Mm-hmm. Yep. Especially in the early age of chatting yes. online. I have friends who are married you know, they're my age. They're, I think they both just turned 40. They met when they were 12 years old on AOL.fuckingcom. Oh she lived in Texas. He lived in Chicago. That's yes. That's the cutest thing I've ever heard. Their story is incredible. It's incredible that he, yeah, he, wow. when they were like 15, he sent her parents $145 and a letter and said, you know, I'm in love with your daughter and I want her to come visit me for Christmas. And here's the p- money for the plane ticket. Oh, <laughs> <I know. laughs> so sweet. Oh, yep. God. Yep. Well, let's go back in time. I know. <laughs> it's so sweet. But this is not that. No. God. I wish it was. At one point, Tommy became convinced that Jesse was sending her photos to other online admirers, and to prove her commitment to him, she sent him a letter along with one of her thong underwears oh. and a sterling silver necklace. On the catfishing side of the argument, Tommy forgave Jesse, but Tom Sr. did not, saying, quote, because you will hurt him and he's an idiot and he will believe your lying ass. Oh. So let's not forget. Tommy and Tom Sr. are Thomas. They are the same person, right? Just in case anyone's sort of spaced (laughs) out and came back in like I have a tendency to do with podcasts. Yes. So Tommy forgave Jesse, but Tom Tom Sr. decided not to forgive her. (laughs) It's a lot to keep track of. Seriously. So the two spoke twice a day between 6.30 and 6.40 a.m. And then again between 3.30 and 3.40 p.m., and eight months after they started talking, Tommy asked for Jesse's hand in marriage, and she no, accepted. No, he didn't. Yes, he did, and she went for it. Gosh. She continued to send him thong underwear and jewelry, worried endlessly about his safety, and would say things like, quote, won't be long until it's Jessica Blair Montgomery. Yeah, he's 46. He yeah, he's a asked dad. a 17-year-old teenage girl to marry him. Yeah, this is not good. No. Thomas became totally obsessed with his new girlfriend, spent all of his free time online chatting with her, and told coworkers that he planned to leave his wife and move to West Virginia to be with her. He even wrote, get this, quote, On January 2nd, 2006, Tom Montgomery, 46 years old, ceases to exist and is replaced by an 18-year-old battled scar Marine. He is moving to West Virginia to be with the love of his life. That's not how this works. You doesn't? You don't just turn into... (laughs) No, let me tell you. Let me tell you. This is not how this works. (laughs) It's not how any of this works. He vowed that he would set aside enough of his imaginary millions to care for Cindy and the girls, even as he fantasized about the life he would build with Jesse. Wow, like delusional. Delusional. When he didn't transform from a middle-aged man to a ripped teenager like he hoped he would, he wrote, quote, I wish I would know the exact time I would change to new Tom to prepare for it. Oh, no. 
like really like really delusional yes like serious actually seriously delusional oh. yes like so in love with this teenage girl online that he thinks Just he can will, will himself in, yeah to become a teenager again so finally in february of 2006 thomas's wife cindy discovered the teenage girl's underwear and gifts which led her to the online affair thomas had been carrying on with jesse she wrote thomas a letter that said cindy her his husband her his wife. his hu- his wife thank you god <laughs> Quote, what I cannot believe is that you are living out some bizarre fantasy as father and son. If you want to separate, we can, but to continue to lie to me and the kids while she is sending, quote, your son gifts in the mail is not acceptable. I just, I don't, like, what do you do? I can't imagine. Not only is your husband having an affair with a 17-year-old girl in West Virginia, he's also pretending to be his own father. Right. It's like a triple so weird it's so beyond weird yeah. i would this woman i don't know she has the patience of a saint i don't know i don't know <laughs> yeah. what, to, what to say about it so the couple stayed together and thomas slept in the basement while they worked through his indiscretions cindy felt it was her responsibility as a mother of two girls to let jesse know the truth about her fiance and so sent her a letter with a photo of their family quote from what i am pulling from your letters you are much closer to my daughter's age than mine let alone tom's cindy wrote are you over the age of 18 in this alone he can be prosecuted as a child predator <laughs> she's like yeah you could just sleep in the basement you fucking child predator yeah <sighs> and her kids were like 12 and 14 or something oh, at the no, time. No, no, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Jesse was shocked by the allegations and set out to confirm if they were true or if Cindy was actually another young woman who wanted to be in a relationship with Tommy and so lied to break them up. <laughs> yeah. Jesse reached out to 22 year old Brian Barrett, who was a co worker of Thomas's, and Jesse knew that they knew each other. Brian was a college student who worked part-time at the same factory Thomas worked at and was one of his poker buddies as well. Brian confirmed that Tommy, and Brian also was on the Pogo website. He was another online gamer. Brian confirmed that Tommy was indeed Thomas and was a 46-year-old dad and not an 18-year-old hot millionaire Marine. (laughs) Sorry, Jesse. I'm so sorry. I know. Jesse and Brian struck up a friendship in the chat rooms of the online games they played together, and that friendship eventually evolved into something deeper. No, just stop. Like, just <laughs> stop. This is, nope. You get catfished once, then you're done, and then you go. Well, this is real. Brian's real. He's 22. He's no, a more appropriate age. I know, you know, but you still stop. You just stop. True. It's but Just don't. Yes. But go, you're, you're, yes. Somewhere else. Go to the <laughs> diner down the street <laughs> <laughs> go to the diner go to yeah. the sock hop right go to the pie eating contest i don't know what don't else know. they did in the yeah, 50s we- in west virginia <laughs> go to the coal mines <laughs> <laughs> go to the coal mine socials surely yes. they have some get together seriously <laughs> <laughs> They also started a campaign against Thomas, calling him a child predator on public online forums. They got him banned from a game room, and Brian bragged about the relationship at work. Uh Uh-oh. Wait, but Brian and Tom don't know each other in real life. No, they do. They're co-workers. Oh, they they are. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. So Thomas and Brian were co-workers and poker buddies. And And poker buddies. Yes. So Brian was one of the people who was like, you should go online and play poker with us online because we all of us do that too and then she went to brian to confirm because he knew tom in real life because they all yeah well yeah and they played online together and stuff correct okay sorry got it no prob so jesse also shared her passwords with brian who would then log in as her to chat with thomas just to humiliate him oh yeah no Thomas responded that, quote, half the company thought he was a, quote, fucking loser and predator. Parents no longer trusted him with their kids. His life was so destroyed that he appeared to be contemplating suicide. Quote, you can say goodbye forever to me and Tommy, he told Jesse. 
So Jesse didn't completely abandon Thomas, though, saying that, quote, if he, meaning Tommy, actually existed, I would still be holding him every night and sharing dreams with him every night. She said that she ached to be with him and only started her relationship with Brian to get back at Thomas for the deception. She said her life was a, quote, living hell, and she just wanted, quote, everyone to hurt like she did. To be 17. To teenage drama. Despite these claims, Jessie carried on her relationship with Brian, and the two eventually made their status public, which devastated Thomas. Thomas wrote to Brian, quote, I can't believe you chose her over your friendship. You wanted her. You got her. Tell her to leave me the fuck alone. But Jesse continued to play both sides, telling Brian not to visit her when he had time off and telling Thomas she planned to break up with Brian. Thomas agreed to forgive her, but said, quote, If I find out any lies were told to me, you will lose something very close to you. By May of 2006, Jesse and Thomas were chatting so much, Thomas was barely sleeping. Oh, no. When he wasn't chatting online, he was running five miles and spent two hours at the gym every day. Whoa. Quote, he showered Jesse with attention and she enjoyed the adulation. If he wasn't engaged in intricate analogies about his, quote, snake in her, quote, WV, which no. stood for West Virginia Fox, uh-uh. <laughs> he was professing his love. Gross. When he wasn't making cringy sex analogies, he was lashing out violently from jealousy, threatening to, quote, delete her from his life or Ugh. post her address online so that, quote, and words could find her. Oh, no. Yuck. This guy sucks. Where's, and where's sucks. his wife? Like, she, I don't know. I don't know what to say about that poor woman. I mean, you find out that your husband is having an affair with a fucking teenager. Just kick him out. Just call the police. Kick yeah. him out. Get rid of him. But she, you know, I don't, I, I don't want to blame her because, God, what a horrible, horrible position to find yourself in. But, yeah, he just continued to, like, chat obsessively with Jesse, and it wasn't good. Yeah. I don't think her it's life was good. It's probably just easier to be left alone. Like, if he's leaving her alone in, in the basement computer or whatever, you know, she's yeah. like, fuck it, I don't care. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah, my heart. I just everything was broken. Vomit for her. Yeah. Well, and it sounds like up to this point, he was just a very devoted and completely normal father. Like, yeah. took his kids to swim lessons. They called him like the chairman of the pool or something because he was there all the time. You know, he was. Yeah. It just went from normal, great, average life to fucking terrible bullshit. No, I can't. I can't imagine. Yep. So then, in the summer of 2006, Thomas found out that Jesse and Brian were back at it. Uh Uh-oh. And on September 13th, he wrote to Jesse, quote, You are a whore, and that's all you will ever be. (laughs) She wrote back, quote, I'm leaving now, and signed off. He continued to try to communicate with her, but got no answer. And the next day, he wrote, quote, Hey, whore, you sucking your BF Brian's cock today? Also, she's 17. Seriously, stop it. She's not your girlfriend, and she's 17. So, yeah, enough. That's enough. He called her on the 15th and was, quote, screaming in an uncontrollable rage, so she hung up. So at 10.15 p.m. on the same night, Brian Barrett clocked out of work and got into his truck, he was then shot three times through the driver's side window with a thirty caliber <sighs> rifle and died. Damn it. This whole time I thought Tom was the one that died. No. Oh, fuck that guy. Yep. At midnight that night, Thomas wrote Jesse, quote, you waiting for your BF? And at 2.15 in the morning, he wrote, quote, come on, CW, your BF, Brian, won't mind you talking to me. No. Yep. Multiple people listed Thomas as a suspect when interviewed by police, and one coworker said that Thomas claimed he'd been, quote, bad-mouthing Barrett, and his behavior had grown increasingly erratic. He told a coworker he wouldn't be, quote, stupid enough to leave shell casings lying around if he were to kill someone, 
and ask the same coworker what time Brian got off of work. Keep your mouth shut. Can't help it. He's nuts. He is yeah. not a good person or no. a smart person. Detectives found Jesse's number in Brian's phone and called her to warn her that she might be in danger and also contacted the police in her town to check on her. Which, good move. Seriously. Thank God. Right? Yeah. Get the fucking, get some protection on this poor dear. When police arrived, Jesse's mother, Mary, said that the teenager wasn't home and she had no way to contact her. Police relayed that information back to police in New York, who were adamant that they'd spoken to Jesse at home and that she had to be close. So police in West Virginia continued to question Mary on her daughter's whereabouts and relationship with the two men in New York, and eventually Mary, quote, <sighs> came clean. <gasps> Oh my uh -huh. god, she was back catfishing them. She was actually the person who had been chatting with the two men online, and she'd used her teenage daughter's <laughs> identity to lure them in. Oh no. Can oh, you no. believe that shit? Yeah, I can. <laughs> <laughs> no. Isn't that fucking god. lunacy? People need to get hobbies. <laughs> People need to God. get off of the line. Hang up. Seriously. Go disconnect get a your Disconnect your dial up. Go to the sock hop. Log off. Go Come to the on. mines. There are more fun things to do. You there's a hundred percent chance you know, that you are just loving it. Talking to a catfish. You are a catfish getting fucking catfished. God. And somebody died. That's so awful. Can you believe that? A 22-year-old no, kid. a young guy. A 22-year-old yeah. kid. Innocently thinking he's dating a 17, 18-year-old girl. Like a college student working part-time at a factory uh, playing poker uh, with some bros while he's, sucks. you know. Yes. So tragic. Quote, the lithe 18-year-old blonde of Barrett's and Montgomery's fantasies was a plump 45-year-old married mother of two with short brown hair. Police found a... P I know. I know. Yeah. And the fact that she used her f daughter's yeah, identity. Yeah, so creepy. It's actually her daughter. It wasn't some photo she found on the internet. So police found a peach pit next to Brian's truck that tested positive for Thomas's DNA. <laughs> Fucking peach pit? Having a little Don't snack. Don't eat peaches. What? Having a little snack. Yeah. Just leave this right here. They also found a leather cartridge case with dog hair on it nearby, and when they searched Thomas's house, they found his thirty caliber rifle was missing, and they also found his stash of Jesse's thong underwear. Ugh, gross. Thomas was arrested for Brian Barrett's murder on November 27th, and he'd claimed he'd gone out to dinner after work and returned between 10 and 10.10 10 p.m., but his wife said it was at least 30 minutes later. His cell records put him in the vicinity of the crime, and police intercepted a phone call to Cindy from prison, where Thomas said, quote, Of course there were dog hairs on the cartridge case. Don't you remember the state of the car? Ugh. There were also hundreds and hundreds of pages of online correspondence, about which the assistant DA said, quote, He was a guy who, prior to this happening, was a very dedicated father to make that much of a transformation as a result of communicating with a fictitious person is pretty frightening. Yeah. I'll say. So Mary, who is the other half of this tragic catfishing scenario, was a deeply devoted mother who is described as, quote, one of the best mothers around and was so impressive in her parenting that the principal of her children's elementary school hired her part-time. Oh, she said she joined Pogo to relax and play games and didn't realize until she started playing that she'd used her daughter's screen name and had been redirected into a teen room, but she never bothered to alter her account, and which, to which I say fucking bullshit. There's no yep. way. It's a paid site, too, so That's no not way. a whoopsie. She That's not like exactly your what she was doing. daughter has a poker account and you right. just accidentally no. logged in as her? No. No. She said she never returned the feelings the men had for her and was happily married to her husband of 23 years, which bullshit. I also... Bullshit. She said Brian was a, quote, sweetheart, and Tommy just needed someone to take care of him. Nope. Not your job. Yeah. No. Nope. Also, that was not some caretaking. That was some no. straight-up manipulation. 
She said she didn't want to let go when she realized Tommy was Thomas because she didn't want anyone to hurt themselves or others. Call the police, lady. If you think that somebody, a 46-year-old man, is hitting on your 17-year-old daughter, you call the police on them. Seriously, You don't play them against your now 22-year-old boyfriend. No. (sighs) Thomas's daughters sent him a letter in prison saying they didn't want to have anything to do with him, and he tried to kill himself after the fact. His marriage also finally fell apart. And Cindy stopped visiting him in prison. He said he'd carried on the affair because the words came easy to him online and he doesn't have the same gift of communication in person. He said he did love Jesse and planned to have Tommy killed in Iraq eventually. He said he never became suspicious of Jesse not being who she said she was because she sent him so many photos of herself over time. In the end, Thomas Montgomery took a plea deal and pled guilty to first-degree manslaughter and was sentenced to 20 years in prison for the murder of Brian Barrett. Barrett's parents consented to the plea knowing he would likely serve less time if convicted on second-degree murder. Uh, And that is the (laughs) WT fuck. (laughs) Poor Brian. Of all WT fucks. And the case of catfishing of Uh, Thomas... Montgomery and Mary. I don't know Mary's last name. Mary Bullshit. Mary Store. <laughs> Mary Bullshit Store. <laughs> she is the it's... owner and proprietor of the Bullshit Store. Yes. <laughs> God. Good one, Court. Thank you. Thank you, Courtney Cox. Seriously. I actually found that on Reddit. And some multiple people were like, that movie is crazy. So I said, Laura, <laughs> let's watch this movie. And it was... Like I said, very entertaining. Not the highest quality film, but it was entertaining. It's worth watching. I mean, now you'll know the story. But I I was not suspecting the twist of the mom no. being the daughter. I did have a thought, like, while you were talking. And I was like, well, wouldn't it be funny that if she was also catfishing? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. It, 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 I just feel like most people catfish. I mean, I, it probably still now, but it definitely early on. Like you didn't go yeah. on to chat rooms to be yourself. It's really true. Well, and my friends who met each other, like he was kind of on there as a troll. He was on there with like, you know, crazy names like Strogozoid 69 and like, <laughs> you know, Slapper 666. Right. Or whatever. You know, he was sort of like looking for to like just be obnoxious right. and she had blocked him and then he'd refound her with as like strapazoid 666 or whatever it's so <laughs> funny yes <laughs> so her her online troll i mean he was a 12 year old boy but he right. was also kind of just like a obnoxious Jerk. fucking teenager right. yeah and sure enough here yeah. they are married and that's definitely not to excuse any of this but i definitely know any time back in the early 2000s or whatever if i got on a chat room it was to make believe it wasn't to oh, like yeah. actually make relationships or care totally. about people but i also never prolonged that or you know you'd talk to one dude and yeah you know try like, to figure out what the acronyms meant for everything and then got bored but right like do you guys like led zeppelin right yeah what are you guys doing hanging out yeah me too Yes. Yes. Yeah. So this just went too far. And poor Brian. Poor Brian. Just trying to play poker and have a cute girlfriend. Yeah, it's fucking tragic. Yep. It's insane. Yep. It's insane. Time to get hobbies, everybody. Get out there. Get a loom. Get a... I don't know why weaving is always the first thing that comes (laughs) to mind. I told Courtney I needed a hobby a couple months ago and that was your suggestion oh, that's right i did maybe because i want i should just start weaving it yeah. just looks it looks so pretty sometimes when they use all the various thicknesses of yarns it seems itchy and sneezy to me but oh yeah that's a good point i'm pretty allergic to wool maybe i should, <laughs> maybe I should stick to the five fucking thousand hobbies I already have. right yeah because you and i both need more things to do yeah start a podcast yeah. Well, I guess oh, you yeah. could probably troll as a as a podcaster too. Nobody can see you. Well, I am seventeen feet tall. <laughs> you and it's very hard to shower nice. 
<laughs> Very good catfisher. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm almost as good at catfishing as I am at marketing. <laughs> These are my strengths. You keep it up, kids. Thanks. Thanks. I mean, I guess that the host of Case File could be anybody. Maybe he's a 45 year old mom. <laughs> God, you that know? would be an amazing twist. That would be an amazing twist. Yeah, what do you think? I always think he's sort of like tall and skinny and has dark hair. That's dark hair. I picture. Um, I picture him a little bit more rugged because I know he listens to like metal. I've listened to his Q&A. Oh. Yeah. So maybe, I don't know, a little stockier. I have no yeah. idea. God. I don't ever look at podcasters' faces. Nobody look at my face. I'm always just, <laughs> you know what I mean? Don't look at me. What? Who, well, who's the host of The Daily? What's his name? Oh, oh motherfucker. Do you know yeah. what I'm talking about? Yeah. I not. I don't listen to The Daily. And this is actually why, because my friends were like, <laughs> don't look at his face. And they're like, you should listen to The Daily, but don't look at his face. And then, of course, I looked at his face. Michael Barbaro. He's got a nice face, but it's yeah. just, he wears like kind of pretentious glasses, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and mm-hmm. he's very handsome, like incredibly handsome. But, the, but they were like, yeah, if you look at his face, then you'll just picture, you'll just like picture the sort can. of pretentious glasses. You know what I mean? Right, it's right. just like, you just want to picture him like a, just sort of a humble older gentleman or something. And he's like a young kind of hipster and you just don't, you know, you don't want to know that. Yeah. I don't want to know that. Right. Yep. I know. I totally agree. What do people who haven't seen my face think I am like a, like a vulture, like a bird with a, with the lady's voice. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. They definitely think you're a vulture. <laughs> I think my and voice. I think I like... am a pretty princess. Yeah. You're pretty, you're a nice, uh, 17 foot tall, nice person. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy. oh boy so anyway yeah guys get a hobby on online offline get offline get out of there yep it sucks yeah uh real quick let's talk about comfort shows of course speaking of courtney cox yes you watch i want friends? people oh i did i watched friends i i was a nanny back in the portland days before i became a doula and my the family that i nannied for they loved friends Mm -hmm. and i nannied for them for years and eventually watched all of the episodes of friends on dvd anyway i find myself this is my anxiety probably i prefer to watch shows i've already seen that's my preference yeah pretty much all i want to do is watch shows i've already seen (laughs) yeah Uh, like when i was pregnant with my youngest i watched the office probably like twice in a row and there's i have a lot of shows like this right now i'm watching gray's anatomy <laughs> which if you haven't watched <laughs> in a while i think i'm on season five but it is so good and it is so bad it's like a it's a full-on soap opera yeah it's just like a drama like a telenovela god right? it's good i just <laughs> i keep thinking like maybe i'm done maybe this is getting too crazy and I keep going. And I know there's like a hundred and thousand seasons. Oh, now. yeah. And I know that Ryan will div- divorce me if I continue. But yep. yeah, I was really sick. And that's what I did. I just watched Grey's Anatomy. But I want to know, like, what are your comfort shows, people? Tell me yeah. what you guys watch or what could you watch over and over again? Um, Schitt's Creek. Schitt's Creek. Just yep, rewatched that, that for the couple. third time. Um, yeah. Friday Night Lights. Oh, Put that on yes. right yeah. now. Pen fifteen. God, oh, I just want to live in that show. Is anybody else okay? Are you all okay? Yeah, are all of our pen fifteen devotees? Are you okay? I'm not it's, okay. I'm very much not okay. No, I will never be okay with that. No, thank you, ladies, for putting that show out. <laughs> but please don't stop. <laughs> we were just t- Sadie and our best friend and I were te- texting about it last night, and I was. T- Tearing up just talking about the show because it's such a perfect, flawless, pitch fucking perfect Every example of, of female friendship. Ugh, I just got chills again. It's I know. Good. I'll start crying. Can't yeah. talk about it. Nope. Thank you. Move on. Thank you from the bottom of my hearts for making that show because it yep. is exactly you know what who used to... the world needed. Oh, another another uh, comfort show that I've watched recently was Sex in the City. Right? I rewatched all of those. <laughs> 
Stacey's yeah. talking about the new the new ones. She oh. loves it. Oh she my god, loves shut your mouth. It. She Stop thinks it. it's so good. <laughs> yeah, no, that was so bad. Like I got through the first episode of the new season, and that's enough. I'm not. It was atrocious. It's embarrassing. It's boring it's, and awful. It's and, offensive. Yes. It's like they managed to do all of the bad things. <laughs> yeah. In Within the first like 15 minutes. Yeah, I've even. never been so annoyed and horrified and bored. They're like, we're going to take these like fairly well-developed characters that the world doesn't really need in 2021, first no. of all. like We don't really need this show in 2021, no, but whatever, we're going to bring it back. Because everybody you know, loves it, has an affection for it. But we're going to take these well-developed sort of aspirational characters and turn them into just clueless hags. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, what are and you doing? And destroy their closest friendships, which is the whole point of the show. Yeah, and remove yeah. all their agency. Anyway, I don't yeah, want to talk uh, about it. I was getting yeah. mad. Yeah, no, I cannot watch it i'm gonna burn it uh, to the ground do it i mean but don't do that what don't i do want to know is like what are your comfort shows what should i branch out to i'm gonna move on to other people's comfort shows that will then become mine that i haven't seen i've heard gilmore girls is really good i haven't ever watched that sort of things like those that actresses yeah anyway something i've been thinking about yeah people yep like, Battlestar galactica is a big comfort show but you can't find any oh god i love that that was a great show yes that was great but you can't find it anywhere to stream hold on really no i haven't looked in a while but no what kind of licensing nonsense is that that's mean that's just mean there are like that's people's whole thing battlestar galactica yes it's it's a really good show you know what else is people's whole thing tell me names sending me names sending them to me you guys, are, you did a, you did it. You said a lot of them to me again. Keep doing it. Don't ever stop. Um, so there's a hair salon in Newport, Oregon called Hair's the Thing. <laughs> it's really going to make me cough. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, Hair's the Thing. Someone sent us a sign that said come park plaza c-u-m park <laughs> plaza and which i don't think is real but i did like look it up to confirm um i could not find come park plaza but there is a come park grill what, what? who is eating there nobody. it's real it's real nobody yeah wow Ugh. um <laughs> i saw i saw this one i can't remember where but shannon pickens <laughs> <laughs> that's adorable somebody passed a dump truck called Humpty Dumpsters. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to switch the to dump truck business just to say I work at Humpty Dumpsters. <laughs> so cute. So cute. Uh, there's a dermatologist called Julie Flesh. <laughs> F-L-E-S-C-H. <laughs> um, somebody signed... Oh, God, I... I Sometimes I don't write these down because I think I'm going to remember what the backstory was. But somebody's initial is T and their last name is Waters. And so they signed whatever the thing they were signing up for is T Twatters. (laughs) I think it was like their username for their computer, Twatters. There's a last name that's hyphenated. It's Eaton Cox. (laughs) There's another... Another hyphenation, Cockman Dickman. (laughs) And he said, FYI, he was, is a doctor, so he is Dr. Dickman. Wow. God. Anna Wang married Brad Holder for Wang hyphenate Holder. Why are these hyphens coming from? This This is is all from the same list. Okay, good, good. Yes. Yes. Jennifer Best and Donald Lay for Best Hyphen God. Lay. Lisa Wacker and Greg Daly for Wacker Daly. <laughs> Teresa Kuman and Frankie Topomi, Top- Topomi for Kuman Topomi. Topomi, <laughs> come, basically, come on top of me. <laughs> <Whew>. <laughs> Apple and Jason Bottom for Apple Bottom. Oh Stop. I can't do names. It's going to make me cough. <laughs> Let's kill my sister with names. More names uh, that came through at work, they said. Oh, yeah. They said, yes, you were correct. I do work at a hospital. <laughs> uh, last name, Penis 
his breath. What? That is not real. P E A N I S. Breath. Wow. Penis breath. <laughs> Last name, flavor, hyphen, balls. <laughs> Not real. A newborn named Regret. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, <laughs> ouch. Nyquilla. N Y capital Q U I L A. Yes. <laughs> I would name my. I love Nyquil. God. God, I get so excited for those few days when I can take Nyquil. Oh. I always give myself one little extra day. Like, it's over yes. and cold is wound down, but I'm like, okay, this is my, like, fun day. Yes. <laughs> Just, ugh, I sleep so well. Don't abuse NyQuil, though, no. guys. Don't do it. <laughs> Richard Butt. <laughs> Dick, Dick Butt. Dick Butt. Uh, a newborn born this week. Danger Outlaw. <gasps> what? It's magical. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Um, some kids of famous people. Bob Geldof's kids are Fifi Trixabel, Peach's Whoa. Honey Blossom, and Little Pixie Fru Fru. <laughs> oh, shut up. Calm down, Bob <laughs> Geldof. Seriously. Calm down. Penn Jillette's daughter is Moxie Crime Fighter. Yeah. We know a Moxie. Yeah, we do. Your husband said that there was a, cater- a place ca- catering his holiday work party and it was nothing bunt cakes <laughs> uh okay a florists called floral and hardy a cafe called deja brew a solicitor is called right hassle <laughs> another salon called facial attraction yes god i stand facial attraction a carpet cleaner is called Spruce Spring Clean. <laughs> spring Clean. That's amazing. Not sprinkling like rain. A removals service called Jean Claude Van Man. <laughs> <laughs> a Thai restaurant called Titanic. Always love a Thai pun. Yes. A laundrette called Lord of the Rinse. <laughs> And their friend is a kitchen fitter and has a business called Bonnie Tyler. Uh, this is amazing. It's <laughs> amazing. I want to live wherever you live. Seriously? Whatever that fucking town is or I, the surrounding area. Jean-Claude Van Man is... That's amazing. I want to hang out with that guy. I want to have a beer with Jean-Claude Van Man. <laughs> I just want to live in this all these names forever. That was a good list. Is that it? Yes, I think that wow. I think you've had enough. Wow. Yes, no, that is it. Outrageously good job, everyone. Very good job. Very yeah. just when you think there just couldn't be more. There are always more. Yeah, we live in a wonderful place. You know? Yes. It's horrible, but also that is these all these things are realities. These names of That's places right. and people are real. You know, it's are wonderful. Patreon supporters, yes, yeah, we got to do it today, Court. We got nine of them. Oh my god, I, I am not prepared. I need to me me mama. <laughs> I know. I think we accidentally skipped a week, so we got to we got to make up for some lost time. Holy mother. Okay. Oh, real quick before to do a Patreon episode, I should have said this at the beginning of the episode. I'm so sorry for the fucking audio issues with last week's episode. You should be. You should be. Well, Very you sorry. should be because you <laughs> sent me that crappy link that didn't work. I hope. I don't know if it's ever going to update on Spotify, but basically, Sadie sent me a link that I had to convert from YouTube to MP3, and then you looked like edited it in. It sounded great on my end. Put it up on our host site. No, no, no. Compressed. I don't know what happened. I have no idea. I edited it out, re-uploaded the episode. Didn't reflect on all platforms. So yeah, I don't know what to say. That was the Listen only to it place I could find that nine one one call too. So if you want, to, if you're curious, you can go Google it. Yeah, we, <laughs> yeah, we can send it to you. But sorry for the dead air. It's so obnoxious. Yeah. And anyway, we we sorry. were ready. We just wanted to ruin your day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We have been doing That's this for we... two years and have <laughs> produced 
about 200 episodes at this point as a long con to bum you guys out for 15 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> Booyah! We got you! you. <laughs> Zinger! <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know who's not a bummer? Who? Casey J. Casey Jack. Shit. <laughs> up. <laughs> Her muscles jacked him up. Yes. Took it to the limit. Took it to the source. Went to the power. Feel her force. <laughs> Cassie is jacked. She will rack up the numbers. Get your ass back. <laughs> That's <laughs> really good. Thanks. Like, Marty legitimate. lightheaded. I don't know how many <laughs> through nine. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> my coworkers listen to this. Like my real estate coworkers God. listen to this. They they're gonna take notes. Every once in a while I'm like, oh my God. I step back and think, ooh, real estate professionals <laughs> <laughs> know these things about me. Yeah. Okay, who's next? Uh Woo! thank you so much to Leslie T. Leslie titillating. Titanium. Traffic stopper. Teasing, teasing out the good information. Teasing it out. Uh, tr- tr- trickery, like Puck from Midsummer Night's <laughs> Dream. <laughs> Tricker, a little winsome elf of the forest. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yes. <laughs> She's all those things. <laughs> oh, thank you so much to Marg T. Oh, really? Like my favorite beverage, the margarita? Yeah, I think it's Margaret, but it, Marg. No, I anybody who goes by Marg, I've actually never heard that before. Australian. Oh, of course. Of course Australians go by Marg. I don't, I'm speechless. That's it. I mean, that's all I got to say. Yeah. I, I, I could stop drinking. I actually had this thought the other day. I could stop drinking, but not margaritas. Like, I could give up alcohol, but not Margs. <laughs> not Margs. Not Margs or not tequila or both? No, Margs. 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 Yes. Yeah. I could give up tequila, but not Margs. Would, I it, fucking... would it count to drink a, te- a margarita without the tequila? Mm, I think that's just lemonade. Yeah. <laughs> Limeade. Toast, toast, you know? Toast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, Margs. Marg. 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 You are my... <laughs> I've definitely want to hang out with marg fuck yes 100 percent know this uh, it's all i need i just I, I get it i get it i get you i know everything about you based on your name mm. <laughs> oh, so good. live inside of your seriously body. not just because yeah. you also are the name of my favorite beverage but the name marg like that's a great name right yes. marg such oh. a great name gives me like the chills a little bit <laughs> <laughs> i love marg marg's my new co-host sorry I'm announcing as of right now That's sadie's fine. gonna take I'm a good. step back and I'm marg done. is in yep well, who else uh i'm gonna let marg take this one <laughs> <laughs> it's <Thank> brenda <laughs> thank you so much to stephanie l Stephanie, I'm not done yet. Love you. Good one. I don't know. It's kind of creepy. Super creepy. I think Stephanie. She's probably cool with it. She's a she's avant garde. She's a little abstract, and she can handle it. She can handle it. She can handle anything. Ooh, I'm just seeing we get we're getting some Texas patrons again. That's exciting. Ooh, our our uh, Dallas Coven is back. Yeah, in the they're biz. coming back to us. Fuck yeah! Uh, also, we're number seven in Turkey. Welcome, thank you, Turkish listeners. Hello. Fucking dying to go to Istanbul. Shit, FYI, yes. if anybody wants to host me. Shit. Yes. Uh, thank you also to Carrie R. Carry on our wayward son. <laughs> no, be, no, no, you are done. Yes, love this song. And no, 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 weary head. Yes. Won't you try no, no more? Carry on. Carry on is what they actually said. Stood for carry on. Shit, yes. Mm hmm. 
it's, it's a worthy ballad of Carrie R. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much to Cassie S. Cassius. Um, as in a Shakespearean uh, protagonist. Cassius yeah. was... Uh, uh, I don't know anything about Shakespeare. Help me. <laughs> uh, what are they? What are the characters in Shakespeare? Uh, like a pauper and a royal <laughs> person, <laughs> and a maid. What was the point of Shakespeare? <laughs> I don't fucking know. <laughs> there was definitely a maid. Cassius wasn't the maid, though. Cassius would have been the well. I can help you. Let me help. Yes. Okay. Uh, in my four-year-old's preschool class is a little yes. boy named Cassius. And he, when I go to pick up my child, he yeah. is the one that shoves his face against the glass. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, blows, it's the cutest thing I've ever seen. It's and it makes so me cute. so happy. <laughs> And I look forward to it every day. And his teacher recently was like, that's probably not where we should put our mouths. And I was like, please let him Don't keep putting his mouth. So Cassius <laughs> is the whimsical puck character in A Midsummer Night's Dream. Uh, see? Mm -hmm. see? I knew there was a connection. So, yeah, you don't give a fuck. Just no. jam your face right up to the glass. <laughs> Blow Make it at day. the people. Blow it at Make the people. my day. They might take offense to it. They might be delighted by it. But you know what? It's not your. It's Problem. not for you to hold back <laughs> right. your expressions of yourself, Cassius. P blow it on out there. Smash it against the glass. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. Yes. Uh, thank you so much to Olivia H. Oh, what a pretty name. And also mm -hmm. like Olivia Coleman, who's the fucking best actress. Although the new show on HBO, I didn't really love it. But that's <laughs> not what we're here for. We're talking about Olivia H. Olivia is the definitely like the strong maiden in the Shakespearean play, right? Uh -huh. Like the not a maiden, like a. Um, like, what are other roles for women at that time? <laughs> I think that's where I'm stumbling with my Shakespearean analogies. Well, there were no women in the Shakespeare plays originally. Right. So. They were played by men. Right. But they would... She, Olivia would be a, uh, like, a scholar who is also, like, a um, defended the land, right? <laughs> Totes. Right? Yes. And then you know, fast forward through her ancestry down multiple generations and her children are like also um, like intellectuals who work on farms. You know what I mean? Like they're, you're simultaneously physically very fucking advanced and uh -huh. mentally also incredibly capable. That's what I think of when I hear the name Olivia. Yes. FYI. Love it. You know? Yes. Yeah. I love it. Uh, thank you so much to Gina C. Gina C. Gina C. <laughs> Gina C. Is I mean that reminds me of Genesis, which is the beginning, right? The very yes. fucking beginning of everything. Gina C. It sh it was originally Gina C. But they changed it to Genesis uh, <laughs> based on their love of Phil Collins. But I digress. Gina C is the origin of it all, the beginning of life. So congratulations. Good work. Thanks. Thank you. You, you, you can thank Phil Collins. Yes. <laughs> that was came on today. I can feel it coming. <laughs> Like, does anybody yes. else just listen to that terrible song just to fucking rock it? <laughs> yes. Clint, our bestie, hopefully Clint's still listening. Hi, Clint. Uh, said that in his high school in Edgefield, South Carolina, they would play that at every pep rally and they'd turn down the lights. Uh, and when the drum solo hit, the football players would come crashing yes, through the papers. Got it, but that felt so cool. <laughs> it get everyone pumped in the beginning. Fuck, I want that. Mm-hmm. All right, last. Oops. This is it. This oh, is our breakthrough wham. paper song. Ready? Great. Yes. Thank you do, so do, 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 much do, 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 do. to Khadija B. Oh, I love the name Khadija. I have a dear old friend from back in the day named Khadija from AmeriCorps, which is also where I met Clint. Oh. That is a beautiful name. Khadija. Mm. 
Like, we've got Genesee, which is the beginning, and then followed by Khadijah, right? So mm-hmm. Genesee is the origin, and Khadijah is the, like, good stuff, like the, like the earth, right? Like the sweet, fucking endless, ancient goodness. Fuck yes. That's what, that's what I feel like that is. I feel like... <laughs> <laughs> And in conclusion, <laughs> that's what I feel like that is. <laughs> bow, bow, <coughs> bow. I mean, that's what else could there be? That's all. Yep. Love you guys. Yes, we do. Thank you. Also, um, in a real quick, uh, they will pill wrap up. Thank you so much to everybody who was so fucking supportive and reached out about my little uh side blip about potentially maybe having adhd (laughs) thank you for everyone who said yeah you i've I've always thought you have adhd (laughs) (laughs) like uh, (laughs) that's i will let you know i have a uh an intake appointment with a therapist on thursday i don't anticipate being diagnosed with anything anytime soon um but i will definitely keep you posted and regardless it makes me feel very, very comforted, very validated, very, um, I don't know. It's just really fucking nice to hear from people and have them be encouraging and validating, you know? Seriously. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Same for Sadie and her, all of the shit that we've all going through all the time. Yes. It's so nice. Yeah. It's, it's so important to know we're not alone. Yep. And if we offer that little bit to you, just know that there are a couple thousand of you out there that are giving it back and you're part of that family. Yeah, big We're time. in this together with our anxiety and our ADHD and our bipolar and our... Borderline uh, and... Yes. <laughs> you know, like you're not yeah. alone. Yep. We are here. Well, and I'm, I've been taking inventory of everyone that I love the most. And I'm like, they probably have ADHD. They probably have ADHD. So if you're listening to the show and enjoying it, you probably have ADHD. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I don't, I feel like I, I have parts of ADHD. Like there are definite traits that I have, but I wish I could like say, I don't, you know, like it's not fully. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Well, the, yeah, I, I do believe that you can have, that it is a, scale no like the spectrum so it's you can all, have a no, little bit of it's it it's all or nothing no, yeah but your abstract grasp of humor definitely drives me to think that was one thing that really <laughs> stuck out to me it was just like people with adhd have a very abstract sort of sense of humor and our best friend was like oh my god we should just play cards against humanity with everybody we know and people who get our our picks and cards against humanity have adhd <laughs> and those who don't and i was like that is so brilliant because you all so know like you either are like losing your mind laughing wheezing hysterically over some abstract pick or you're just staring <laughs> blankly like that is not funny what the fuck is wrong with you <laughs> totally. yeah so that's uh. my diagnostic tool if i was a Seriously. therapist that's what i would do let's sit down here come children come <laughs> gather around <laughs> If you are uh, placing logical cards, you do not have ADHD. <laughs> if you are placing random shit that makes you gag laugh until you die, <laughs> you definitely have ADHD. Uh, hey, let's go. Let's get out of here. You ready? I'm ready to go. I mean, I'm never ready to go, but no. it's it's time to wrap it up and let you people move on with your lives. If you want to spend more time with us, you can always find us on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter at They Will Kill. You can go to our website, theywillkill.com, and you can email us at theywillkillpodcast at gmail.com. Hey, rate, review, subscribe, please. Yes, please. We would love it. And generally, just people who are kind of mean review is what I'm learning about how reviews work, which <laughs> well, is just recently, too. But I think yeah. that, I, yeah, whatever. I really don't care about it. But I also feel like, oh, if the mean reviews are coming in, maybe more people are listening. I think that's what that means. You know what I mean? So yep, whatever. I'm more okay is more. It. I'm grateful for it all. Thank you. Yes. Thank you Thank- also to AJ Bergantz for not leaving us a mean review. <laughs> and for our music yeah because if you leave us a mean review i will sue you <laughs> what if it was aj like the sweetest <laughs> kindest most generous most generous person, who's just yep. like trolling us on apple reviews <laughs> <laughs> just setting up new accounts and 
<laughs> in all of his free time between his twin children and his full time job and yeah. his life and his and music career and composing <laughs> more free music for us for our horror podcast. <laughs> He's like, ah, ha, ha. Ooh, what can I tell these ladies tonight? <laughs> Mon to you, AJ. I'm Seriously. currently tracing your IP address. I know it's you, and you are gonna get sued. <laughs> Oh. oh and remember and remember to start looming start weaving <laughs> get a loom start doing it start weaving uh, the time is now if you're listening to this this is a sign <laughs> that it's time to start weaving we it's love great. you yes we do we love thank you. you for listening goodbye goodbye goodbye, goodbye.